Minecraft Legends is not doing very well and it's a shame because it's one of the most inventive things that Mojang had put out in a very long time but I think Minecraft have messed up in their response to this instead just saying look how successful we are we have over 3 million players it's a momentous success it's a 9 out of 10 game and you need to play it right now they're doing these huge advertisement waves they've even made a Minecraft Legends event inside of the game itself but I don't think this is fixing the underlying problem and in case you don't think there is one because I mean Minecraft makes a compelling point Windows Central and IGN say it's great and they do have a bunch of players but the actual stats of the games you can find anywhere independent are not so great. I mean this is Steam DB, which only shows Steam players which is admittedly a fraction of the overall but still that number of players has gone from a peak of 5,322 down to just 189 at 195 at time of recording uh, which is after this big event which should have boosted players a lot. There was a huge Minecraft event and it only boosted players up about 10% uh, and down uh, still over 90% from when it launched. Over 95% from when it launched in fact and this isn't everything of course but what about the Steam players? I mean there are 12 people watching Minecraft Legends on Steam right now as opposed to 35,000 watching Minecraft. Uh, this number goes up and down but it's still very low overall. Uh, if you look at Google Trends which I know is not everything but the number of people who googled Minecraft Legend at uh, Minecraft Dungeons to hear about it uh, was 100 on this scale. That's kind of the base spe uh, for the spectrum. It got up to 10 when Minecraft Legends was announced and it got up to 30 when it was released but there are just far fewer people in interested in Minecraft Legends. To prove that even, here's the Minecraft Legends launch trailer getting 1.3 million views. Some of those are paid views by, you know, it's a thing you can do on YouTube, you can promote videos. Um, but despite that fact, you can see that Minecraft Legends challenge your friends, 145,000 views. Minecraft Legends is out now, plus teasing our new show is a big thing, but only 376. Even Minecraft Legends, the reviews are in, 100,000 views, compared to a video just talking about the snow foxes, got 765,000 views. There are so, you know, like a review, you know, there's so much going on. The the, the, the April Fool's video, 2.2 million views. Minecraft Legends is just not getting the amount of hype that Minecraft probably would have hoped for. And their strategy is to pretend that it's not happening, but I think this is entirely wrong. And so let's do a Q&A Saturday today, but let's go through some of the comments um, that you're saying about Minecraft Legends to get real feedback from people because I think that they've messed up. I think that uh, all of these signs but mushed together are a sign that Minecraft Legends needs to listen to the community better and actually work out what it is that is lacking from the game. And they clearly seem to think that it's just people not having heard about it, but I think there are serious systemic flaws, but let's see what the viewers think. So, uh, just by reading the comment section, it shows that Minecraft Legends is going to be a massive flop when players are wanting to talk about a meme regarding phantoms more than the meme at uh, the game itself. A debate that is, at this point, just beating a dead horse uh, has been going for how long it's been going in the community. Uh, did they tell you anything in Legends about the origins of overworld mobs? They did, but only about the pillagers. They, they could have told some really great stories about everything else, but the Pillagers is the only thing they got, and that's probably a DLC-related thing. Uh, nobody wants to play Legends because it's boring. I pre-ordered, but it hasn't kept me engaged. I've completed it and don't play it anymore. Sadly, that's been me. I haven't played it in the last week, and I haven't been missing it because there's nothing for me to go back to. There's no new content. They were meant to do a Lost Legends every month, but we've gone three weeks now. It's in May, and we haven't actually seen a new Lost Legends. There's no uh, roadmap. There's nothing like that. I feel like it would have been more interesting if Minecraft Legends was like this. This is the most damning comment. A very, you know, like just to show you what the, the, the thing looked like, uh, this is what the the, the, game, the map looked like. You're just hitting a portal over and over again, killing piglins that don't have any decent AI. Uh, Minecraft Legends event was a really basic one to show you what Minecraft Legends was inside of the game. It was very pared down and basic, but people thought this was more interesting than Minecraft Legends. People, I, I, I think to me, if I was to, you know, use uh, the little bit of knowledge that I have about audiences that I know from YouTube, I would say the problem with Minecraft Legends is it's clearly giving people this impression um, of a game which is just not really something they can understand. They can't work out what the win condition is, why they should be excited, in the same way that everyone looks at, you know, Minecraft, uh, you know, like uh, the game, and they can tell it's exciting to build a castle. What do you do in Minecraft Legends? Where are the fun bits? When does it all happen? And the answer is no one can quite tell. Anyway, let's, let's go back to the comments here. Um, I love Minecraft Legends, haven't finished yet. Hope they add more in the future. This guy hasn't even finished yet, and he's still saying, but they're gonna add more, right? This, this can't be all. I haven't hit the end of it, but it's got to be more of that. Um, regardless of Legends are fun or not, it's still a disconnect from the base game. I don't get anything except for envy for blocks and mobs I'd like to see in the base game. This is a big problem. They made the game inside of the Minecraft engine. They made a bunch of really cool stuff and, uh, you know, and, and interesting blocks and mobs and said, yeah, but we can't do that in regular Minecraft. And people just go, but but why not? Uh, why can't we have a crossover universe? It feels like it's Minecraft branded as opposed to being in the Minecraft universe. This is partially because they say it's set in a dream. 
partially because of the whole, like, they take you from Java and most players play Bedrock. It's a whole different game, damn it. But I think the way bigger reason than any of that is... 100%, no doubt, has to be in the fact that they have this game with entirely different mechanics, different blocks, and different mobs. The only way it's Minecrafty is that some of the things are recognizable and that it has Minecraft in the title. They should have gone more grounded, or they should have made everything that comes into the game something that you could foreseeably imagine in Minecraft, which I don't think everyone can do that. People just point to the number of searches, a way to gauge success of something, and I think uh, they think that's tired off when searches decrease, but there's no need to search for something more than once. Search locate and bookmark. And this is a really interesting point. I bet if you put in like Let's, let's, let's actually make this self-aggrandizing. We put, they put IBX Toy Cat in there. It's not going to be doing very good, right? Because once you find IBX Toy Cat, even though I have millions of views every month or whatever it is, once you've found IBX Toy Cat, you don't need to find it again. I had my peak in uh, early 2020, I guess in the pandemic. People were excited. Oh no, I'm, I'm one here. This is Minecraft Dungeons peak. Uh, you can see that, uh, wow, you compared to Minecraft Dungeons, no one looks for me. Literally zero people Googled my name in uh, April the 9th to April 15th. However, people are still watching. They just don't need to Google it. And and this could be a point for Minecraft Legends if it didn't release in the last two weeks. In my opinion, you can see like I, I've had some, uh, you know, again, go back, you know, let's let's compare IBX Toy Cat to, uh, you know, so, like house fires. Let's see which one people are looking at more uh, because I'd be, cons you know, IBX Toy Cat is currently uh, less so searched than house fires because did you know greater than 99% of these house fires have to be people who are subscribed to the Toy Cat channel? I wonder why it went up massively here. That is, uh, that's very interesting. House fire searches have gone down massively, which means people care less about house fires, sort of, right? That's, uh, that's, that's, that's something you could argue, but also not really. Anyway, hello, I'm ABX Toy Cat. This is Q&A Saturday, and I have to answer this question from Sefty because it is fascinating. He says, honestly, I would buy a mid-price spin-off game using the Minecraft engine itself, something like the 4J minigames expanded into a full collection. And it's crazy because this comment, both parts of this, since he commented it, have got a little bit of truth to them. One one is the fact that we've learned Minecraft is actually made in the Bedrock engine. In fact, it's made in the Bedrock engine to such an extent that the uh, resource pack that the game is using is a Minecraft Bedrock resource pack. You could download that and put that in regular Minecraft if you wanted to. Uh, it's called Badger and it's got this little B for the logo. It's kind of crazy and uh, the, the, despite that fact, it uses the Render Dragon and that's why it has so many Bedrock characteristics. But the second thing about something like the 4J minigames expanded into a full collection, uh, this came up in a video recently, I think, or maybe Maybe it's in a video that I didn't upload because of all the news, uh, but it came up in a video that, wow, uh, Minecraft, uh, 4J Studios are actually hinting they're doing something new, and they even uh, hinted that certain console YouTubers should maybe come out and test it, but then after everyone said the minigames were so great, the first thing they said was to Harrison, who is a video editor for this channel, according to his bio at least, I hope that's accurate. Anyway, so they said in response to him saying Gary Banner that they were considering naming one of the new characters in their game, Gary Banner, which is a fun enough joke by itself, but they said directly in response to uh, a lot of YouTube YouTubers saying they're on board because they invited a bunch of uh, Minecraft uh, console YouTubers, uh, Stampy, Big B, myself, Echo, and Squishy over to maybe play their new game. And then when Stampy said he's in, let's make it happen, uh, they were looking forward to a battle mini game tournament. And they said we can do better than that. Our new game follow what's on from where we left off with the mini game, so the challenge is on. Whatever 4J is working on, we worried it might actually be unrelated to Minecraft, and all the hints they made would be nothing to do with it. But it follows on from the mini games. They're actually trying to use their console legacy for something. It's obviously not going to be Minecraft. It's probably not going to be directly uh, tied into Minecraft. But if they can use their battle minigame experience and their, you know, because if you remember, the last minigame they never made was Build Off. Maybe, just maybe, we're going to see that. That is incredibly exciting. And honestly, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun thing here, right? Like Minecraft spin offs, uh, when they're doing one themselves as a studio, they've kind of missed the mark. But I feel like the community is by and large still incredibly excited to see whatever this is. And I think that tells an interesting thing point about how, mo you know, hype is something that Minecraft doesn't quite get. To go back to Minecraft Legends just for a minute here, uh, I think the reason the game isn't quite succeeding is because they haven't quite worked out how to capture that slight interest in people uh, to make them actually want to play a Minecraft spin-off that's an action RTS. The reasons to play it are you like Minecraft and you like real-time strategy, but they haven't managed to get real-time strategy people who don't like Minecraft interested because it's pretty basic, and they haven't managed to capture Minecraft players who might be interested in a new spin-off game because it looks 
looks just too unfamiliar and un-Minecrafty. I think they should have done it from a closer Minecrafty feeling perspective. Just like Minecraft dungeons, at least you can see like, well, this is Minecraft with fun weapons. Uh, I think that there is a real missed opportunity and it tells you something about how YouTubers have to capture your attention, right? I could make a video titled uh, 10 minutes of a black screen and maybe a few hundred people would watch it, but I think a lot more people would watch a video called, um, I have to actually go to my channel to see what people are watching. Apparently, my five most viewed videos are the ones about the super flat for the last 30 days, the super flat, uh, the recent news video, uh, free new updates out now, do this before 1.20. People love that one, preparing for the new update. Uh, 69 goals to aim for in Minecraft survival and the, uh, you know, Minecraft PS4 edition. Those were the six most viewed videos on my channel. Uh, but like, you know, isn't it weird that people wouldn't be as interested in learning about the bedrock event? Or isn't it weird that people wouldn't learn about this? People have very specific preferences and it's your job to cater to them. And I'm very excited for how 4J is perhaps trying to cater for their, you know, their former uh, console audience. Uh, just like how, by the way, Semi Hypercube asks, not specifically about 1.20, but what are your thoughts on how nearly every major Minecraft update since the Never update has added more music to the game? Also thoughts on the new music itself. I love Relic. I love a couple of the other tracks too. I think they're pretty decent overall. However, I do have to say that the new music every update is part of Minecraft making updates more formulaic. And I think this is a generally good thing. I, you know, I, I could make a whole video about this and I've, I've considered it, but just to give you the brief of that video, uh, rather than making it a whole thing, I'll give you uh, a three minute video right now. Why Minecraft is making updates more formulaic. Title card. So in the beginning, Minecraft updates were very wild and very different in what they contained. 1.7 beta had just pistons and unstackable fences in it, uh, whereas 1.6 was really a, a pretty limited update, whereas 1.8 added so much and 1.9 added the Ender Dragon. There's, there's a huge difference between what updates used to mean, and then after 1.0 came out, they started to standardize a bit. Every three to four months, they've released a whole batch of content, but even then, the batches of content varied a lot. If 1.4 released today, I don't think people would like it. It's just a new boss, a mob that does nothing, and a witch. You know, it's, it's not a very exciting update, it's just spooky as a whole. And so after 1.12 uh, was a update which came out with some degree of success, Minecraft set about standardizing their updates to some extent. Now after that time, every single update, with Buzzy Bees being the exception to some of these, so ignore that, every major update started to contain a new mob of some form. It started to contain uh, some form of new structure or, you know, like a, uh, whether that's a big one or whether that's a small one, like a new tree type. Uh, they started to contain uh, new music and new touches to the game, a new title screen. They wanted to make every update feel like it was a new era for the game, like how uh, games like Fortnite do seasons or uh, stuff like that. And one of the parts of this is adding a new mob every update and adding a certain number of new creative blocks every update, but it starts to get, you know, and that, that's really great in the beginning because it means every type of Minecraft player gets something from every update. If you don't care about the Never, the Never update still has you covered. There's ruin portals in the overworld um, and there's all sorts of other weird features in there. Uh, if you don't care about villages, the village and pillage update still has campfires. It still has foxes because, you know, the, the, the type of person who wants useless mobs are not going to be happy till every update and the whole world is filled with mobs that do nothing. Uh, but yeah, every single update has something for you. But after a while, that starts to feel formulaic. I think people like this right balance between novelty and things, you know, and things they know. If you go too far from things they know, you get Minecraft Legends. If you go too far from novelty, you get this samey feeling that makes people question, how does this take you a year to make, Mojang? And that's why I think that adding new music and a new splash screen and new mobs and new blocks, every single update is a great, uh, maybe, you know, minimum goal to go for, but I think it's starting to make them feel a bit more like they're the same. Some people still call this the Wild Update Part 2 or Caves and Cliffs Part 4, and I think that's something they need to make a break from. They need to do something very different with 1.21, uh, and I don't know what that necessarily means. I don't know how you'd break from it. It's one of the challenges as a studio. There's lots of individuals who are making lots of great features, but when they come together as an update, 1.20 feels really exciting and great, but it's also starting to feel like this update three years ago would have been received so much better. This update last year would have been received so much better, but after you have a bad hit on a formula, I think it's worth changing the formula. And that's something uh, that Minecraft needs to do in the same way that I guess I've changed the formula for Q&A Saturday. I, I think we started with a four minute rant about Minecraft Legends. And uh, yeah, I just want to finish with one last question here. Uh, which platforms do you have Minecraft on? So I used to have Minecraft on every platform besides the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation Vita, uh, but I recently bought Minecraft PlayStation 
PlayStation 3 edition, thinking that it would run on my PS5 before I learned that it doesn't. You can only play PS4 games on it. So then I thought it would run on my PlayStation 3, and then I learned it doesn't. You can't play PlayStation 3 games on anything but a PlayStation 3. And long story short, uh, that plus my buying the wrong version of PS4 Bedrock are my big regrets that now you know about. Anyway, um, for a little personal update before we go here, um, I have now finished moving from uh, the US. Uh, my setup looked like this at one point, and now it looks like this, and now the keys belong to the apartment building again. Um, it was a very sad thing. I, I know, like, it's kind of weird. Moving is one of these big pains in life. You have to throw away so much stuff, but it's so much nicer when it's done. I'm back in the UK. Look how sunny it is behind me. Oh, wait, it's rainy. Look how rainy it is behind me. Oh, wow, I'm, I'm back here now, uh, and it's nice to be back, and it means we can focus on stuff, like apparently playing Breath of the, uh, Breath of the Wild 2, whatever that's called, Tears of the Kingdom. I've been enjoying it a lot, and I've been enjoying... Uh, being back home, honestly, I, I did a lot of, I deliberately tried to pack as much in as I could for the last month, and now I get some time to chill before 1.20 comes out, which is coming real soon. I imagine we'll see a release date announcement in the next couple weeks for that, like that. We are really, really close to that update, and I am excited, but uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you to all of those that made this possible. I am not uh, unaware of the fact that moving between continents is something that is a huge privilege to do one way, let alone be able to do it back the other way without having your whole life be ruined. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that my biggest scars are just, uh, you know, like uh, memories and <laughs> and money are something that I guess I can say thank you very much for. Um, I love what I do. And thank you very much for everyone who likes the videos or subscribes and makes that possible, even though that's a generic as hell thing to say. So, you know, actually, screw you all, hate your guts. And I hope that I'll see you in the next one anyway, because you're the type of terrible person who will come back anyway, right? Yeah, you you like when I tell you terrible, call you terrible things, huh? You're a, you're a bad, bad viewer, and I, I gotta cut this. This is a bad end of the video. Have you enjoyed it? Have a good day. See you next time. Goodbye.